Imagine a troop of apes that live in equatorial Africa. Their normal sources of food, which are located in the part of the jungle that's their territory, have become scarce. Subsequently, they must adopt a new lifestyle, hunting and searching for food on the savanna. However, whereas the jungle provides shade from the sun, the savanna does not. As a result, the fur coats of the apes become a hindrance, as the coats minimize the evaporation of sweat from their skin and therefore negatively affects their ability to cool themselves. This dilemma creates a selective pressure for little fur or a lack of fur. Subsequently, the members of the troop whose coats of fur are too thick to accommodate sweating will succumb to one of three fates. 1. Maintain a lifestyle that's restricted to the jungle, but migrate to the territory of another troop since food is scarce in their own troop's territory. This option would require either joining the other troop or conquering its territory. 2. Maintain a lifestyle that's restricted to the jungle, but fail or make no attempt to migrate to another troop's territory, and subsequently starve to death due to the aforementioned food scarcity in their own troop's territory. 3. Overheat on the savanna while searching or hunting for food, and therefore die. This will result in only a particular set of apes adopting a lifestyle on the savanna. Those whose coats of fur are at least barely thin enough to accommodate sweating to a minimally sufficient degree. However, there is another challenge. Parts of the savanna are comprised of tall grass, which makes knuckle walking a poor means of travel. The apes' ability to see where they are going while wading through the tall grass will be compromised due to them being bent over, and their likelihood of spotting predators will be less than it would be otherwise. These challenges therefore create an additional selective pressure, one for a body structure that's efficient for walking upright in order to find or hunt for food, and evade predators on the savanna. All non-human apes are capable of walking upright to a certain degree, but because their bodies are optimized for knuckle walking, walking upright is uncomfortable and inefficient for them, which is why they do so only briefly. However, due to the innate variability that exists in every population of every species, there are individual apes who can tolerate walking upright for longer periods of time than others. Hence, there are members of the troop who can walk upright longer than other members and outcompete those members for food on the savanna. Therefore, there will arise a hierarchy that ranges from best fed to least fed, and subsequently from healthiest to least healthy, with the rate of breeding being highest at the top of the hierarchy and lowest at the bottom of the hierarchy, with the lowest rate possibly being zero events of breeding. In accord with the ascension of the hierarchy, the rates of suffering the aforementioned three fates will increase. Thus, the average ability to walk upright among the apes who remain on the savanna will increase every generation. As these savanna apes will now breed with only one another, they will create a lineage of apes whose average thickness of fur becomes lesser and whose average ability to walk upright becomes greater in each subsequent generation. This is made possible via errors that occur as an individual's DNA is copied in their sexual organs in order to make gametes, otherwise known as sex cells, namely sperm and eggs. These errors can be significant enough to result in significant differences in offspring, but they are typically small and therefore typically result in only slightly different characteristics in offspring. Therefore, in every subsequent generation of apes that live on the savanna, there will occur errors in this DNA copying process that will produce offspring whose bodies are slightly better structured, or equally structured, or slightly worse structured for walking upright relative to the previous generation. However, because the offspring whose bodies are slightly better structured for walking upright will outcompete the others, they will be the ones who breed the most per generation, and thus the average ability of the entire troop to walk upright will increase per generation. This process will repeat itself in every subsequent generation until the population will be characterized by a complete adaptation to walking upright, which means knuckle walking will be a thing of the past. The DNA copying process will also affect the population's average thickness of fur. Each generation will have members whose thickness of fur is thinner, equal, or greater than the average of the previous generation. However, the members whose thickness of fur is thinner will outcompete the others and therefore will be the ones to breed the most. And thus the average thickness of fur of the entire troop will decrease per generation. This process will repeat itself in every subsequent generation until the population is characterized by a lack of fur on their bodies. Keep in mind that a lack of fur does not mean a lack of body hair, but merely means that individual body hairs are so thin that they're barely perceptible to the naked eye, and do not compromise the body's ability to sweat. 
modern humans have just as many individual hairs on their bodies as other apes, but they are so thin that they do not conceal skin or impede sweating. Furthermore, as the average thickness of fur decreases over the generations, the average amount of skin that's exposed to the sun will increase, which will create a selective pressure for skin that has a particular degree of melanin, melanin being the brown pigment that colors skin. The particular degree of melanin that is optimal varies with proximity to the equator, where the atmosphere is weakest and therefore where the sun's UV radiation penetrates the atmosphere the most. UV radiation is both helpful and harmful to the body. Skin needs to have a level of melanin that's low enough to allow enough UV radiation into the body so that the body can use it to synthesize sufficient amounts of vitamin D. However, skin needs to have also a level of melanin that's high enough to prevent the absorption of too much UV radiation, thereby preventing cellular damage, which can cause folate damage and cancer. Therefore, the closer an organism with exposed skin is to the equator, the darker its skin must be. In equatorial Africa, because so much UV radiation bombards the skin, the high level of melanin that dark skin contains still absorbs enough of it in order to synthesize sufficient amounts of vitamin D. However, the high level of melanin prevents too much of the UV radiation from penetrating the skin and therefore prevents skin cancer and folate damage. Hence, because the apes in the scenario that has been described thus far are located in equatorial Africa, the apes would develop a medium brown to dark brown skin tone. Anyhow, as the thickness of the fur on the apes bodies decreases with each generation, fur atop their heads, which shall be called hair, will remain more or less unchanged because hair that's too thin would cause the head to absorb too much heat from the sun, which would be transferred to the brain, thereby causing delirium, heat stroke, and other issues. So, members of the troop who have the best thickness of hair would be the ones who survive the longest and breathe the most, thereby optimizing the average thickness of hair per generation. This process will repeat itself in every subsequent generation, until the population is characterized by hair that has an optimal level of thickness. Additionally, the texture of the hair would become more coarse or more kinky with each new generation, because such hair has a rigid upright structure, and it maintains this structure even when it's moistened by sweat from the scalp. Subsequently, the heat that such hair absorbs from the sun is kept away from the scalp and therefore from the brain. Hair of other textures lies down against the scalp by default, or becomes limp when moistened by sweat and subsequently lies down against the scalp. This causes it to transfer heat to the scalp and therefore to the brain, which leads to the aforementioned issues. Therefore, the resulting population after many generations will be characterized by coarse hair on their heads, medium brown to dark brown skin, a lack of fur, and an upright bipedal body. This resulting population will be so different from the first generation to move onto the savanna that it will be a new species.